guys, what's up? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. So the last time I filmed a video like this was back in June when I made my iconic horses in the back Snapchat filter that garnered over 50 million views. When I filmed the video, I believe it had around 8, 8 million, 6 million, something around there. But since then, the Snapchat lens has gained over 50 million views, which is absolutely crazy. And since that time, I have made a bunch more lenses, and all of those lenses have gained around a billion views. And so I'm so excited to share how I make those filters with you. Um, I was debating making this video for a really long time, but a lot of people wanted to learn how, and I'm so excited to show y'all. Before I get into the video, I want to talk a little bit about KSAP. So KSAP has been kind enough to give me a phone case and a laptop skin. So here's my laptop skin. I've been using KSAP for around two years now, and I really enjoy them. I've designed custom cases and laptop skins. So I'm going to be giving away one custom phone case or laptop skin on my Instagram, so stay tuned for that. Since I made that horses in the back filter, I have learned way more about designing lenses and using the Lens Studio program. We are going to be making a simple blush filter, so I'm really excited. This is a really easy way to make a lens that you like and that you feel like you would use personally, and yeah. Go check out all my collabs. I have a collab with Nick Jackson that called Nat X Nick, and that is a butterfly blush. That's the one I have right here, and we I will be showing y'all how I made that one today. And I also have a collab out with Emily. Just search Nat X Emily, and that one's a more Christmassy themed one. And I also have some collabs coming soon with um, a few people that I'm so excited to announce. So if you want to keep an eye out for those you can simply add me on snapchat it's in pseudo and i post about those all the time um to find my filters all you have to do is search natalie pseudo and a bunch of my filters will pop up on snapchat as well Alrighty, guys so to start off today i'm going to be opening up lens studio and you want to make sure you're updated to the latest version i'm not but it's okay it should still work the same so, um, as you can see, this is my homepage. I have all my recent projects right here, as well as a bunch of different templates right here. Today, I'm going to be teaching you how to make a new project without using any of the templates. So, here we have Lens Studio. This is just how the home screen of Lens Studio looks when you haven't done anything yet. And so, today, we are going to be making, um, a blush. So to start off, first what I'm going to be doing is the basic. Um, I'm going to be doing a face retouch on three different people. So to do that, you go to add new and you scroll down to face retouch. And to make it so that it works for three people, I'm just going to set, um, change the values to what I want. And I usually turn off eye whitening and eye sharpening just because I don't really like those. And then we're going to copy this and paste and this should make two and then we're going to change the face index to one and when you change the face index to one this allows you to have this puts it on a different face so face index zero is the original face index one is the second so we're just going to copy and paste again and this will bring up a second or a third one and we will just change the face index to two this means that we should have three face retouches and these will each work for three different people. Um, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to face mask and you want to use face mask instead of um, face image because face mask is what allows it to kind of bend to the face and conform to the face better. And so for this specific project, I'm going to be doing a broken heart blush um this um this heart i found off of google or i've recently started using gifts mostly because i think they do a really good job so i accidentally changed the opacity texture to that so we're gonna fix that really quick so i'm just gonna control z and i'm gonna go to 
I'm clicking on texture, the imported GIF, and we're just going to press OK, and it should come out looking wow, like this. Looks like there's a problem. It, <laughs> it should come out looking like this, and so to fix that, we're just going to mess around with the blend modes. I'm pretty sure I need to use Lighten. Yeah. So I use Lighten, and then we're going to be moving the blush around the face. So Lens Studio is really funky about these kinds of things. Um, in order to move the blush around, you have to select all the points on the face. It took me a really long time to figure this out. I think Chris was one of the people who helped me figure that out. No, Brandon. One of them. And, um, so you're basically just going to want to move it around the face. And, yeah. So, to do that, you select all the points. So you click and drag, select all the points, and you can move them around. Um, and, yeah. So that's about where I want to put it. So that looks good to me, and so right now I'm just going to, I'm going to do this lens for three different people, so we're just going to copy, paste, there we go, and I'm going to change the face index to 1, and then we're going to paste again, and we're going to change the face index to 2. Now this means that the face mask should work for three different people. We're going to test it really quick by going into the preview section and going to the pair two image and yes so it shows you that it works for two people so now we're going to be doing another face mask and this time we're going to be doing the other side so a way I can do this is I just paste the the one we did before I'm going to delete this first one and so now we have the other the same side of our face mask and so we're just going to move this over right there. And so that's going to be our face mask for the other side. So now, since I've got this, I can just copy it and paste it and change the face index. And now, as you can see, it works for the other person as well. So we're going to copy that and paste it and change the face index to 2. And now we've got it working for three people. Now I'm going to be adding a blush. And this image was what we used for my collab with Nick. And a lot of times what people do is they find images off of Pixar, put it in the one studio thing. I don't know how many people know this, but if you have any previous projects saved, you can actually access any of the images and anything you imported filter you can access through that saved file so and that will all be under public and so I have the PNG for the blush right there so I'm just going to open that and import it and there we go as you can see it's a little bit high so I'm going to be moving it around the person's face and so I just lowered it just a little bit and I'm going to be setting actually I'm going to leave the blend mode as is but I'm going to turn the alpha down to about 60 and and what alpha means is it's just how opaque and how transparent that PNG is. So I'm leaving it as 60% because I don't want it to be super red on the person's face. Um, but it really doesn't matter. You can do whatever you like. And so now we are going to be copying and same kind of deal. We're just going to paste and we're going to change the face index so that this works for three different people. So there. So now every single person should have a face retouch, a heart on the right side, and a heart on the left side, as well as a blush. Now what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be adding a post effect. Post effects can be really difficult and really easy to make at the same time. Personally, my post effects, I create custom using Lightroom and Photoshop. I'm going to be doing a tutorial for that. Um, depending on what you guys want. But Snapchat does offer a bunch of different post effects that you can use um, in their program and I'm going to be showing you how to use those. Now that I've got all my effects laid out, I'm going to be adding a post effect. So when you go to the add new button, scroll up and there should be all these different things. So these are post effects and we're actually not going to be using post effects, we're going to be using color correction and I just call them post effects. Um, and the first one we're going to do is red lips, and I use this one 
pretty much for all my lenses just because I think it adds a really nice touch. This post effect is nice because it just brightens any reds in the picture. So that's one post effect that we're going to be doing. And then another color correction, color correction, that we're going to be doing is... And I can, I'm can i going to show you how to use one of the post effects that Snapchat has. So this is the clean post effect. And personally, I wouldn't use it because it's not my style. However, if you wanted to use a post effect, you would go and you'd select it and you can change it up in there. This is the inspector. If you wanted to change the texture, you could do that in here. However, most of the time when I want to change the texture of a post effect, I simply um, do the click on the texture and import a post effect that I have already made. The post effect that we are going to be using today is my tan filter. This is the filter that I made for summer tan, summer vibes. It's the one I have that's got bluish and nice orangey color and as you can see it just make it deepens the blues and makes it look orange. <laughs> so we're going to be using that one for this lens mostly because a lot of people enjoy it and so do I. So there you have it. This is the lens. This is the finished product. And um, to name it, you're just going to go and you're going to name this Heartbreak. And we can choose the lens icon as well in under the pop project info setting. Here is the logo that I have designed for this lens. So I'm going to be using a logo that I designed on my phone and for a lot of people who want to know how I design my logos I use Superimpose and Fonto. So here we go, here's my logo and it's just the basic shape of a head and then you've got the like heart thingies, yeah, I don't know, I don't know. And we're gonna name this Heartbreak, <laughs> that makes me so sad, anyways. So there we go, and then for my lens preview, I already have an image that I use, and this is a my typical lens picture, and it says in pseudo, and then that way people know where to add me. I don't know why I picked this image, I need to take a new one, but I'm too lazy to. So we use an image from the summer when I still wore acrylic nails. Anyways, so we're going to take a quick little video, we're going to do a 5 second clip. I'm going to be saving this under my Snapchat gifts, videos, and icons folder on my computer just so everything stays really organized, even though it's not. So when I go to publish this lens, um, one of the things I want to add is I'm going to be adding different tags. And one of the things is you want to add as many tags as you can that relate even even a little bit to the project, mostly because a lot of people search for these common things and yeah, you can have at most eight tags. So to add the preview, we are going to be going and selecting Heartbreak. And it's going to review and it's going to take a while to load. So once you have made a lens, it can take, generally my lenses don't take super long to be approved. However, the longest mine has taken to be approved was 20 minutes, and that was my autumn pack right here. And when you publish lenses, you should be able to see the amount of views, plays, and shares that it has, as well as the date it was posted and whether or not it's live or not. To change whether or not you want it live or whether or not you want it, to change whether or not you want it live, all you have to do is go under this tab and select deactivate. I'm not going to deactivate this one, but you can also manage the preview and manage tags. One of the, my biggest things is always save your lens project because you can never change the name of the project or the icon unless you have the saved project. What most people do is that since they have that project saved, they can just open it, change whatever they need to change, then they can replace that old project with it. There's not a way to go back and edit your old projects. You have to have your project saved already and go back and technically republish it. Alrighty guys, well thank you so much for watching. Hopefully this helps you create your dream lenses, things that you 
thought you might not be able to do and now you can. Hopefully this video explains it really well. Um, and yeah, if you have any questions or you have any requests for tutorials, comment them down below because I really want to do more videos like these. And yeah, I'm really excited. And don't forget to follow my Instagram and my Snapchat, which will be linked in the description. Call this part you anywhere.